All right, so this video is going to be covering chapter 19, section 1, which deals with oxidation and reduction. And so first of all, I think we should define oxidation and reduction. So oxidation uh, is the loss of electrons, basically. Now, for all intents and purposes, it's, it's you know, a increase in oxidation state realistically. But to think about it more intuitively in terms of the theory of the atom uh, as we currently have it, uh, it's a loss of electrons. Likewise, reduction is a gain of electrons. And reduction is easier to remember than oxidation because you can think of it as a reduce in charge. So because uh, electrons are negative and you're gaining negative electrons, you're reducing the charge. Therefore, it's called reduction. Now, both of these combine because you have to conserve these electrons. Uh, they always happen together in what are sometimes called redox reactions. Now, redox reactions are understood through the use of oxidation numbers. And if you want more info on oxidation numbers, there is uh, some info on page 631 in your Modern Chemistry by Davis textbook. I also have a video uh, from Chapter 7, Section 2, which deals with oxidation numbers and definitions. And I'm not going to go over oxidation numbers again because I've already done so. So for reference, if you want the rules on defining oxidation numbers and whatnot, I would see one of these two references. So we begin our uh, look at oxidation and reduction with oxidation, which once again is the loss of an electron or an increase in oxidation number. So if we look at the below reaction, which we've seen many times now, the reaction of sodium with chlorine to form uh, common table salts, sodium chloride, uh, let's write the oxidation numbers to determine which of these atoms or ions undergoes oxidation. So Elemental uh, compounds always have zero as their oxidation number. And then in this ionic compound, sodium has an oxidation number of plus one, and chlorine has an oxidation number of negative one. So because uh, sodium increases its charge, that is, it gets less negative, we can say that the sodium lost its electron in this ionic bond and increased its oxidation number, therefore uh, the sodium underwent oxidation. Now this is a full sort of redox reaction. To break this down more uh, and just write the oxidation reaction, all we have to do is look at what the sodium undergoes. So you start off with your elemental sodium, right, and that transitions to a sodium ion with a charge of plus one, and then due to the law of conservation of charge, you must therefore have an electron, which has a charge of minus one. And this sodium in this process is what we call the oxidized species. That is, it's the species in the reaction that undergoes oxidation. Oppositely, if we look at reduction in this reaction, which is defined as gaining an electron or decreasing oxidation number, we can look at elemental chlorine, which once again has an oxidation number of zero, and it eventually goes to uh, two chlorine ions that are negative. So they each have an oxidation number of negative one, two times negative one is negative two. So you have negative two oxidation number on this side and zero on this side. Therefore, to remedy that, you have to add in that chlorine gained these two re electrons as a sort of reactant in this reduction reaction. And its oxidation state is reduced from zero over here on the left to negative one over here on the right. And much is the same as uh, sodium was called the oxidized species, chlorine is the reduced species, that is the species that underwent uh, reduction in this reaction. Moving on now, we're gonna be combining the two to look at oxidation and reduction as a process. And as we've already discussed, due to the laws of conservation of charge and mass, uh, if an oxidation reaction occurs, a reduction reaction must also occur. Basically, in order to conserve the mass and charge of the electrons, uh, if one happens, the other has to happen. In other words, if you lose an electron here, you have to gain an electron 
here in the reduction. So combined, these are known as oxidation reduction reactions, sometimes abbreviated as redox reactions. However, if you write them alone, the oxidation and reduction, uh, without their opposing part, they're what is, are known as half reactions. So you can have the oxidation half reaction. For example, if you take uh, copper and then ionize it by removing two electrons to form uh, a positive copper ion, this would be the oxidation half reaction. Likewise, if we were to take these two electrons and add them to nitrate, so if we have NO3 minus plus two electrons plus four protons, basically, we're assuming this happens in solution, so there can be free protons floating about in the solution of water. Here we have the water itself. Uh, basically, this would be the reduction reaction because you have, you know, your electrons floating about as a reactant. And then to form the whole reaction from these two half reactions, you simply cancel the common species on either side. In this case, uh, that's just the electrons. So to get the full redox reaction for uh, copper uh, transferring electrons to nitrate, you'd end up with atomic copper plus two uh, nitrate ions and four protons in solution yielding a positive copper ion, two neutral nitrate ions, and two water molecules. So despite the fact that we have, you know, the electrons as a product in the oxidation reaction and as a reactant in the reduction reaction, it's important to note that redox reactions don't necessarily indicate a uh, transfer of electrons. Rather, they show a sort of redistribution of the electrons. So for example, if you have hydrogen and chlorine reacting to form uh, hydrogen chloride, because this is non-ionic, that is, this is a polar covalent bond, uh, the chlorine doesn't completely take away the electrons from the hydrogen. However, they do still change oxidation numbers. So they're both zero here because they're in their elemental form. But then the chlorine takes on an oxidation number of negative one and hydrogen takes on an oxidation number of positive one. So these redox reactions just indicate a change in oxidation number, not necessarily a transfer of electrons.